Hello everyone! Today I thought about another character design exercise, turning teas into characters, more specifically witches, since I wanted to make my version of this prompt very different from Lavender Towns. Also, these characters don't have any names, so feel free to give your name suggestions in the comments. Let's get to it! First of all, my all-time favorite tea, Apple Cinnamon. I drink this one almost every day. Essentially, this tea is made of black tea with pieces of apple and some pieces of orange. And finally, cinnamon. It is a bit strong, but it's really good. Since it's a, a special blend, I usually get it from, um, in this case, a coffee specialty shop. But you can definitely find something similar in tea shops as well. Probably there are some tea bark versions of, of this tea, but the quality isn't quite the same. The one I got smells so good, and despite having spice, cinnamon, uh, mixed into it, it's very sweet, even without sugar. I, I still drink it with sugar, I have a sweet tooth, what can I say? Uh, because of this, I imagine this character would be very sweet, but also very sarcastic and sassy at times. I give her a very cottage quarry type outfit, so a very fluffy dress over a blouse, and a very cute hat covered with, in flowers and two cinnamon, cinnamon sticks. I intended the flowers to be apple blossoms, but since they are very stylized, they can also pass as camellia sinensis, i.e. tea flowers. I also gave her a very cute bob haircut that curls at the ends, kind of like how cinnamon curls. I wanted her to have bright red hair to allude to the apple part of the tea, but that gave me quite a bit of trouble. But I'll get to that in a second. The way I write witches, they are only magical because of their witch stones. These stones are gems that are born with the witch, and traditionally, the witch uses the stone to make accessories like earrings, pendants and bracelets, so that they can carry their stone with them. In the case of Apple Cinnamon, her witch's gem is in her earring and has a flowery shape, like those flowery shaped things that sometimes are in the pictures of cinnamon. This thing, uh, I don't know what it's called, but I gave her that. About the colors, when I started to color her, I had basically no plan, which is a big mistake. I spent way too long fine-tuning colors. I fixed that in the next drawings, I promise. I, I just tested out color combinations beforehand. I wanted her to have very red hair, but also a darker skin tone. That was giving me a lot of trouble because of the contrast, but I managed to make it work. It's not perfect, but I still really like how she came out. My second character is based off of Earl Grey tea. Earl Grey is a blend of black tea with bergamot oil and supposedly it's good for you as long as you don't drink too much of it regularly because uh, it can lead to some sort of intoxication. When you say it like that it kind of sounds scary but it only happens if you drink a lot of tea. I first tried Earl Grey a few weeks back and I thought I wouldn't like it because I heard that it is a strong tea and it's true, it is strong, but I found out that I like strong teas. So uh, when I tried Earl Grey for the first time, I didn't know how long I should get the tea to brew. So I left the bag on my cup for about five minutes, which, spoiler alert, it's too long, especially for a mug. The tea bags are designed for teapots. <laughs> Needless to say, it was bitter, but I drink tea with sugar anyway, so it balances out. Another thing, I drank a whole mug of Earl Grey at 7pm, and if you didn't know, because I didn't know, Earl Grey has caffeine. Quite a bit of it. Just a little less caffeine than your regular cup of coffee. I, I think you can figure out what happened next. When I designed him, I thought a standoffish fancy witch. Not only because of the name of the tea, that in itself gives off that vibe, but also because it's bitter flavor. For his outfit, I made a little bit of research into Victorian fashion and gave him a big coat and a cravat with his witch's stone pinned on it. Since he wasn't looking a lot like a tea witch, I decided to put Earl Grey tea leaves on the inside of the hat. I gave a lot of muted colors, uh, because if you look at the tea leaves, they are very dark and with the exception of a few pops of lilac and yellow, a bit like how I painted the inside of the hat. In regards to his relationship with Apple Cinnamon, he'd be the mentor figure.
The third character is another beloved tea of mine, lavender tea. The tea I actually drink is a blend of lavender, chamomile and some other plants, but I decided to choose just one and run with it. I usually drink this tea at night before going to sleep. It's a very calming and comforting tea. Very sweet and smells really good. I started to drink it at a time where, for some reason, I'd get very anxious at night. I'm almost certain it's because of the amount of coffee I was drinking. I would drink the tea and it would help me calm down. If it was really calming me down or, it, or if it was just placebo, I don't know, but it worked. When designing Lavender, I wanted her to be a grandma figure, since the tea was so comforting. When designing her outfit, I took inspiration from my own grandmas, short hair with a cozy sweater and an apron. I also gave Lavender a child which is basically a scarf that you can put around your shoulders. A lot of older ladies use that around here. I feel like it's a very Portuguese accessory. The hats in the, these designs are always super fun to do. With lavender, I wanted her to have dry lavender hanging from the brim of the hat, almost like a veil. When I, it comes to colors, I was able to do what I wanted to do with apple cinnamon, but couldn't really do it in a satisfactory way giving the character a much darker skin tone. I think the lavender hair and overall color, color palette helped a lot, and after putting a filter on top of the colors, they became super harmonious. I'm really happy with this one. And finally, our last character of the day, Matcha. Maybe I should address this right away? Uh, no, Matcha isn't a witch, it's a doggy. More specifically, a familiar. I had this idea in my head of a Matcha dog and I just had to test it out. Uh, this little guy was almost the entire reason I wanted to make this video, to be honest. So, Matcha is a ceremonial tea used in Japanese tea ceremonies. It can be a very expensive tea. There is cheaper matcha, but the problem is that the characteristics of cheap matcha are almost the exact opposite of ceremonial matcha. I tried, I tried it once, the cheap matcha. I had gone to a bubble tea shop and saw that they had a matcha strawberry tea and I tried it right away. I, I didn't like it that much. I'm pretty sure it was because of the tea they, they had it plus the strawberry, plus the tapioca. I found out I don't like tapioca. It was overall an okay experience, but a terrible way of tasting matcha. I'm planning to go to a tea house sometime in the future so I can try actual matcha. Back to the doggy. There isn't much to say, to be honest. I really like the idea of a matcha green dog with white accents and a fluffy tail. In his tail, I also gave him wooden accessories around it as a reference to the wisp people use when preparing matcha. And with that, we get to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, consider leaving a like and subscribe. And until next time, bye!